Hey, if you've been struggling to find your life purpose, then this interview's for you. Stick to the end to find out. Uh, joining me is Master J, who specializes in helping men find their purpose so they can do great things because it's very frustrating when you feel like you don't belong. You feel like you don't fit in and you're wondering, what am I doing with my life? So Indeed. you've got the answers for this. Uh, Master J is a spiritual teacher like no other I've met before. Um, she has a great deal of expertise on finding purpose. And I, you know, I want to ask you, jump right in and say, what, what do you do if, you, if you're stuck finding your purpose? What's the answer for that? Okay, so the answer is self-awareness. You know, everything in the universe works in fractals. And us human beings are no different. So if you don't know what something is for, and you study it closely, then you can figure out what this object is for. And it's very similar with us. So if you look at yourself deep down and you find out your strength, your weaknesses, what you stand for, uh, what kind of talents you've got, then you will find out how to put that into use. Because purpose is not something that you actually do, it's something that you are. And most people confuse the idea of purpose with their job or career path, which is not true because you can channel your purpose into your career path, but you can't uh, yeah, I mean, purpose I was going to say, I when I was at college, I remember having a great deal of pressure trying to find out what my purpose was. And when I graduated, I was in the big wide world. I was doing jobs, but they weren't really, they didn't really feel in alignment with me. Yeah. And I, there was so much pressure. Like, find your purpose, you will find happiness. Mm. Uh, so I, Which I, is true. Right. But, you know, what is, you know, if this thing that we're seeking, it seems so difficult to find sometimes. Right. This is because most people don't know themselves. Right. They really don't know what they stand for. They have no idea what they even want. Like deep down. Mm. And it's it's tragic, it's sad how many people don't get what they want in life because they have like half of a clue of what they don't want, but they don't really know what they want deep down. And with purpose, because purpose is an embedded part of you. Purpose is something that you are. You are living your purpose as a living being because this is how the universe is designed. So I'll give you a quick example of how it yeah. works. Okay. Think of a grain of wheat. Mm -hmm. So from the nature's point of view, its purpose is to find itself some fertile soil, germinate and become a plant and not just any kind of plant, but the best it can possibly be and develop itself in, in its greatest capacity than uh, leave more seeds and further the evolution of yeah. the species. So um, similar, for example, with a little bird. It's the purpose of a little bird, right? Well, the only purpose that it's got is to grow into the biggest, strongest and the most beautiful member of its species and to again further that evolution and get their their um, uh, the next generation be uh, superior to the previous one because this is how um, this is how evolution works this is how the universe works it's actually using us in a way to evolve itself so this is why by evolving ourselves we actually follow uh, along the purpose of the whole universe and we realize our own purpose through that. Okay, so um, Understanding that you know, we're this this um, Expression of the universe yeah. How do we find out how do we connect to that purpose like so I'm here and I've, I've understood that mm -hmm. But okay, so what's my next step? What do I do to connect to that to find that purpose within myself to understand what my grain of wheat moment is? All right, it's actually fairly straightforward uh, but it's not easy. It's one okay. of those things. Oh, okay. See, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, because uh, our purpose is encoded in our very soul structure, in our energy structure, in who we are, it's important to understand that the better you know yourself, the better you know what you have, like what kind of cars you, you've got given to play with. Okay. Once you understand that, 
then you will be able to see how you can improve on that and capitalize on that to actually grow. Because unlike uh, other things, uh, like say birds and trees, and well, to, to a degree, they actually do the same, but we as human beings have more responsibility. Um, and by responsibility, I mean our evolution is not just for us. So part of your purpose, you know, that, that saying is uh, the purpose of life is to find who you are, your gift, and then uh, to give it away. Right. So it's that idea. Our development is not just for us. So the work that you put into your self-development is never just for you. It's for the world. It's how you contribute to the evolution of the whole world. How do you make this a better place uh, for yourself, for other people as well? So it's not about being a martyr, like, oh yeah, I, I always only do things for ourselves, uh, for others, and nothing for myself. That's not right. Um, remember, as the Buddha said, your compassion is not complete. Well, apparently it was the Buddha. Your compassion is not complete uh, unless it includes yourself. So this is how it works. Okay. You contribute so, to it. So as I understand that then, uh, we need to get some clarity on what our existing strengths are so we avoid the trap of trying to be someone we're not. That's true. Right. And I, I know, again, in my past, I studied computer science. Right. And I wasn't really interested in it, but I thought, oh, that, that pays a bit of money, I'll do that. Mm. Uh, and it always felt out of alignment. Right. And I was always actually drawn to more creative things like art yeah. um, and painting and things like that. And... That just felt like it wasn't it wasn't easy, but it also wasn't a struggle. Mm. And I certainly felt when I've not been in alignment with my purpose, I felt like I guess what you would describe a masochist. Yeah. Of trying to fit that that circle into the square the square into the circular hole. Yeah. That's true. It triggers depression a lot as well. Right. Oh, okay. Okay, so so that's where we're at then. So we know we need to find those those strengths that we have. Uh, what's a good way to do that? take a proper training, really. Okay. Um, that may sound predictable, but it's really true. Um, it's the same like with the strength of the physical body. If you want to upgrade it, if you want to become like Marcus, you need to train. <laughs> you need to train. So it's, it's very similar for the mind. If you want to get a stronger mind, if you want to upgrade your mind structure, you need to train. Um, as you know, I've got one of the trainings which is designed especially for this purpose which is Project Zero, but um, anything that resonates with you, um, if you if you trust the teacher, uh, would, would work. But one of the things, it's not just understanding your, your strength, because many people know their strength, but they still don't know what they're here for. And it's like an inner voice that keeps nagging, and it can really poison your existence, because if you've, if you've been on this path of looking for a purpose, you know how awful it feels when you are off track. How it just keeps saying something's wrong, something's wrong. But it doesn't tell you what is wrong. Mm. It just says that something is off. And it can drive people crazy. Yeah, I've certainly experienced that feeling of being out of alignment. And also the feeling of not really feeling I belong. Mm. Like feeling, why don't I, not necessarily fit in, but feeling like... You know, I'm waiting for this hero's story to happen and it hasn't oh, happened yeah. yet. Uh, could you speak a bit more about that? Oh yeah, sure. Uh, I love this question. So uh, one, of the, uh, one of the things that self-awareness brings you, one of the benefits of self-awareness is just that you understand on which part, uh, on which level of spiritual evolution do you stand. And it's super important. What most people don't realize, I mean, they, they, they half realize, but they haven't put it into words, is the fact that everyone develops at their own speed. So we're not all the same. Um, we develop with, uh, with a different speed, which is fine. Someone said to me, oh, don't explain this system because it implies that other people are younger and other people are older. And yes, they are. It's not some sort of spiritual communism where everyone is exactly the same <laughs> because the parts it's all themselves. So. Right. Everyone develops at their own rate. And mm. there is nothing shameful or wrong about being younger. It's like there is nothing shameful about being a kid. 
yeah. or, or a teenager <laughs> because that means that your potential is just there to be discovered like you, you're still growing into it which is fine but um, technically there are four categories of spiritual development and th these are broad categories so again I want to warn people against putting them or trying to put them into boxes and saying okay that's that's it and close the lid mm. because nothing in nature is like that uh, everything in nature flows and every, everything is in, in a state of flux so those categories are broad and they merge into each other but yet they are prominent enough and obvious enough for you to be able to tell what they are so the four categories of spiritual development is essentially how old or young your soul is and just as adults can do more than kids because they're stronger and bigger so the souls that are a bit older uh, typically have more power over reality I'm going to explain this in a bit so the first level I refer to them as humans for the lack of the better word I've seen a few of those about <laughs> okay because um, well some people call them uh, muggles but I think that's unkind um, essentially these are people who have not yet tapped too much into the spiritual level of their existence mm -hmm. so they are mainly focused on their physical reality their physical body and these are the kind of people who have what we would call a mundane mindset they, they want they actually generally uh, want the nine to five job they want uh, security they want all the all the human things like they want promotion and then after work they watch Netflix and just go shopping and and, and that's it basically they um, they are the time that it gets mortgage it gets a family and dies and <laughs> the end the end yeah. but you know what it actually works perfectly fine for them because mm. this is what they want to do don't they complain a lot though <laughs> uh, they do complain but this is because um, they don't actually understand what it is they really want mm. so they think they want something they chase after that they spend a lot of time and money on getting that they get that realize it's not what they wanted and get depressed mm. and again self-awareness is king okay so what was number two so that was number one yeah so the number one uh, was the humans and the most, um, I would say, most prominent feature of them is that, well, not only they're the majority, by the way. So if you don't feel like you fit in, chances are that you just don't belong to that group. And number two is what I call, um, from that level up, uh, I call people stars. And the reason for that stars yeah stars okay, as yeah. the luminaries in the universe okay the reason for that is again as above so below because if you look at space you will see that there are stars the luminaries and there are planets mm. that are orbiting around and they benefit from um, from that star so they benefit from its warmth its light and just like that in our society you have people who are like stars and we, we even have this saying it's like oh he's such a star mm. uh, because people sense that there is light to them they can't describe it they they call it charisma most mm. often uh, because we don't really have one word to describe it but they call it like inner light in charisma because there are channels in your mind that conduct that inner power that people perceive as light Okay. or as charisma yeah. and so what happens is um, in, in humans in that first group which is the most numerous those lines are pretty thin and there are not too many of them so obviously they still have them mm. but it's not yet so pronounced but later on uh, on the next level they become a little bit more powerful a little bit more self-aware and their influence of, on reality becomes more prominent because by the way we all bend reality just by the fact of our existence we may not realize it but it's it's true it's, it's happening all the time so when you think of something and then it happens just the way you thought or 
you were thinking of someone and they called you or texted you, that is an example of your thoughts making uh, making waves, making ripples through the universe. Mm. So, yeah, a friend of mine just bumped into a celebrity they were talking about uh, just before this video, actually. <laughs> really? Yeah. So it happens like that synchronicity. Yeah. Okay. That's that's uh, that's really handy. So as you develop yourself, your power to create those seeming synchronicities increases. And so the next level up, uh, I call minor stars. Why minor? Because although they are a bit older uh, than the first group, the humans, they're still kind of on the borderline. They can still do uh, mundane jobs. They can still go into nine to five. But they are slightly different. So they, at that point, they start asking questions. They start asking whether it's really all there is to life, that mundane existence, wanting money, power, influence, whatever, over the physical world. Is that all? Is that sort of like when you're at a party and you think, hang on a minute, something's not right here. And that kind of waking yeah. up moment, like, hang on a minute. Yeah, exactly. What am I doing here? Yeah, okay. So, so they start asking questions and because they start asking questions, they, uh, they become more aware, they discover things, they um, are into meditation. Like humans not only don't meditate, they're actually scared of it. And you will find out that if, if you talk to someone who is human, they will be like, don't even talk to me about that. Mm. And they genuinely are apprehensive. Um, every time you start talking about spiritual things, and this is how I always warn people, like if you're a star, don't try to impose your knowledge, your extended awareness on this first group, because it generally, it, it genuinely makes them uncomfortable. What the and bloody hell is that some about? Kind. I don't understand what you're like, That's what the, the yeah. response is, yeah, I think. Yeah, and, and I just think it's unkind, because mm. they're not ready for it yet, mm. and it's fair enough, you know, they will get there in their own time. So this, this first group starts asking questions, and they get more inner power channel through them, meaning that they become a little bit more powerful than mm. the general public. So what's the next group? So the next group, which is even less numerous, are the senior stars. And the senior stars, it's a bit like a, uh, in the army, you know, yeah. the best way to imagine it. Uh, so imagine the minor stars are soldiers. Mm. And so the senior stars are now officers mm. that can kind of look after them. The reason why is because their understanding of reality is wider. Uh, how this happens. So as you develop yourself, your mind is actually changing. You know, as you're working out, your body is changing. Mm -hmm. And you can see that in the mirror. But as you develop yourself, your mind is changing. And although you may not necessarily be able to see it in the mirror, you will see it in the way your mind functions. And so you start being able to perceive things that most people can't even perceive. Like you can see the auras or some visitors from the spiritual world. Mm. So you can see ghosts and astral entities and all sorts of things that are normally uh, mm. considered non-existent because most people can't see them. And I guess when humans do experience that, that's when they freak out. Oh, massively, massively. Yeah. So they try to avoid this altogether. But, um, even for the minor stars, there is a limit to their perception. Now, senior stars can do more because they're older, they're more experienced. And by experience, I mean the experience of many lifetimes. So although you obviously develop throughout your lifetime and you can progress a lot towards the next step, um, that usually, especially without the right training, uh, if, if you're just doing it intuitively, that process can take a long time. It can take many lifetimes. So as you get a little bit older and you start, start understanding deeper things, you actually start looking at the world as a complex system of interconnected objects and elements that work together. And not only you start asking questions, you start finding answers to them. And what happens is you, you actually get a deeper insight into the nature of reality and yourself. And so also your influence on reality increases. So in other words, you can manifest more and more powerfully.
simply because you've got more power. So that power that your mind is channeling is like you're growing muscles. Okay. So now you can do more spiritual push-ups. So just a quick question, because I have another one. Is, uh, so what were the four types again? You've got humans. You've got humans, you've got minor stars, senior stars, and great stars. Got it, okay. So I remember something you said to me once, which was, you know, rather than look at your purpose, you know, it's good to just ask yourself, what is my potential? Yes, because they are interconnected. So am I right in thinking then that depending on what one of those four you are, yeah. it's going to determine how aligned you are to your purpose. Uh, so if I, I'm just putting all these building blocks together yeah, yeah, that you yeah. pro uh, provided. So, okay, so if I'm human or, well, hopefully I'm human, you know, <laughs> but, but if I'm of that level yeah. or um, I'm, you know, just sort of thinking, hang on, things aren't right here, that would probably be the best time to find out what my purpose is so I can get to those higher levels. Would that be correct? So no matter what level you're on, you may have the same struggle. Right, okay. And not only that, it actually intensifies the higher up you go. Okay. And it gets worse. So on the first, uh, first level, I'm just going to cover it quickly because there are very few people who are currently on that level. Because that, that person in Colorado in the mountains, yeah, this is for you. Well, people like Ramana Maharshi. Yeah, I don't think he's watching that. He might be. Just Maybe in the replay? Astral TV. Yeah, yeah astral TV. Okay. Some, some souls that are very old, uh, well, not very old in the spiritual terms, but they're older than the rest. I refer to them as great stars because they stand out. They radiate so much light that you can't miss it. Uh, their influence on reality is enormous. And quite often they become celebrities, they become people of influence, even naturally, without doing anything, simply because of how much their presence bends reality. And you can see that there are a few of them around, but even a few of them are enough to shake up the equilibrium because of, of that massive amount of power. And this, this kind of people, uh, once you come across them, you know. Because okay. you know their presence is so much different mm -hmm. from everyone else. But uh, just as you said, that quest for purpose actually intensifies as you go. And the problem we all are dealing with on this planet, or most of us, is that we forget what we stand for. We forget our past, but we also forget our purpose. And that applies to stars and even great stars just as much as it can uh, apply to humans. And so, by the way, humans don't seem to look for their purpose that much because they can sense it. Uh, they sense that they should look after their physical reality and be kind of guardians, protectors mm -hmm. of the physical world. So to build the best home they can build, uh, to, to look after their health, uh, to look after their children, and that's their purpose on that stage. And by the way, there is nothing wrong with that. People seem to <laughs> create this gradation of how posh your purpose is. Mm. Well, it doesn't work like that from mm. the universe's point so of view. So your purpose isn't like you're a dustbin, dustman or something, or a bin man. Your, your job is never your purpose. Right. Uh, so your purpose may be to cleanse this world of impurities mm. as a person in whichever way. So the universe doesn't think in human categories. And the jobs that we think are unposh or unpopular would still be very valid and very important from the universe's point of view. So it's not, it's not about having a posh purpose to live for. Yeah. Because that's, that's, uh, that's a quest for the ego. That's not how you're serving the world. You're not trying to show off and prove yourself. Mm. And as I said, um, those, those people who are referred to as stars, some of them are sleeping stars. Mm. And by a sleeping star, I mean someone who has this knowledge and has this power, but they've forgotten it. So they're using it uh, instinctively, but they don't really realize why uh, and what it is for. But they have this nugging pain in them to live their purpose. And if someone is 
completely bent obsessed with their quest for purpose they are one of those older souls guaranteed because as i said humans find their purpose in beautifying or sometimes destroying if they don't know what they're doing the physical world and it serves them right someone who looks for a spiritual benefit are usually stars okay so what do i do to find my purpose then well you start from becoming really really self-aware okay you really look into who you are as a person, what makes you tick, mm -hmm. what makes you feel alive, mm -hmm. what scares you, mm -hmm. and then take a proper training to mm -hmm. help you get there. It's the same with everyone. You know, if you want to run a successful business, what do you do? Well, you find out what you want to do, and then yeah. you take a training to get you there. So, is finding is the moment you find your purpose like a binary moment, like a black and white moment, where you're like, that's what it is. Or is it more, uh, it's in that direction, or it's over in that direction? Do you see what I'm like? Is yeah. it a very, is it something that leads you to a very specific answer, or is it more of a feeling? It's a feeling. Right, okay. To begin with, anyway. Well, obviously for different people it's different, but ultimately it's, it's a feeling first, because uh, that purpose that that code that we describe as purpose mm. is on the non-verbal level so the non-verbal parts of you will discover it first usually in most cases and once you get that feeling slowly you will have this vision crystallize mm. in your conscious mind slowly and like bit by bit and then usually what will happen you won't want to do it how do you, uh, okay, uh, how like do you, you, you will actually, uh, most people actually actively resist doing it. Right. Yeah. Cause I guess it feels uncomfortable. Massively. Um, how would someone, someone like me, uh, get training on that? Well, you can talk to me, uh, or if you find someone, um, who you think is worth your trust. Uh, I haven't seen many people out there. This is why I'm here. But, uh, if you know someone who can take you where you want to be without imposing uh, religious overlays because usually in our society people would find their purpose through some sort of a religious practice mm. and it's still lingering so I've, I've seen people saying that they teach purpose but usually it's based on some religion Christianity or anything else they're using um, so if that works for you by all means. If not, you can use my uh, Project Zero program. Okay, cool. Project Zero. Awesome. Thank you so much, Master Jay, uh, for Thank you. taking me through that, that process and uh, explaining uh, the stars and the, and the layout of that. And uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you on the next episode. Thank you. And if you enjoy this video, check out the rest of them. I've got an amazing library for the seekers of their purpose. Thank you again for watching. It was Jay and Marcus, and see you next time.